So not a whole lot of progress today, but we did manage to get the parking brace, yeah, parking brace, parking brake uh, actuator valve doohickey installed. And I had enough room to sneak all my wires, or not wires, all my tubing up and over. And then I used the, uh, the old speedometer hole, speedometer cable hole. Um, I guess I'm not planning on reusing that anymore. So yeah, I got the push pull thingamabob in. I ran the three eighths tubing back to the tank. And then I ran one over here cause that's where the, uh, the uh, brake can is gonna go. I was thinking about mounting it vertically with the rod facing straight up and then making some sort of lever. So when that pushes up, it, it uh, pushes like a lever and pulls back on the cables. But anyways, that's about all the progress today. So I guess that's kind of the next projects here is getting, getting some sort of manifold here so that I can start hooking things into the tank. So I'm gonna have to get some fittings for that. I got the air brake system that needs to be plumbed in. The uh, governor still has to come back to the tank. Um, Venturi for the heating system and the air horns. I still have to find a location to mount the air horns. There might be room up next to the transmission. Maybe I could fit them in there. I don't think I got anything else going in there. If not, I might be able to get them in the uh, front bumper. So, yep, that's about all I got for you. All right, guys, so I got the air system plumbed up to a point where it should be sealed. Um, right now, there's really nothing on it, just the uh, air brake circuit here, but everything should be closed off, so it should build pressure. So we're gonna fire it up and see, see what happens. So let's see if it'll even fire hasn't been started in a long time and it's fairly chilly out so got that old wait to start light all right so there still is some sort of interlock um, with the key so unless I put it in reverse the key won't try to start so I still have to I got a little more work on that to do to figure out what once you get it out of gear you can start it again in neutral but it's got some sort of interlock that i gotta figure out again but uh so we're just getting jumping under the hood like we're still having some issues with air and the fuel.
definitely got to turn it up a little bit because we're not even at 120. But the, uh, the brakes aren't hooked up to anything, so you push that and it just blows air out back here. We got some work done today on the emergency brake canister. As you can see, it's mounted down in here. Mounted it vertically so that rod will push up when you uh, engage the parking brake. And it'll suck back in when you release it. Um, it's turned out pretty nice. This nice thick gusset's on there. The sucker ain't going anywhere. So now I just got to figure out how to make it pull on the cable. Cables come in from the side here. I'm going to put a tab here on the frame with a hole in it, and that this cable will go into that frame or into that hole, and that'll hold these. And then I'm going to build some sort of a jack shaft type of deal. I'll probably drill a hole right in this, stick a piece of nice big pipe in there, weld it right in, and that'll stick out over here. Then I'll find a piece of tube that'll slip over that build some sort of tab system so when this pushes up that whole pipe turns and it then an ear facing down and that will pull on the cables I got this nice stainless steel turnbuckle to put in here for uh, adjustment um, so I guess I got to pick up some materials to fabricate that whole jack shaft system and hope that it works um, the brake canister has a three inch stroke. So from fully released to fully engaged, it's three inches. I just measured the brake cables as far as I could pull them and I got four inches. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out the different, you know, length and levers, you know. So this one over here, I think will have to be longer so that it pulls, a little, it has a little bit longer stroke than this side. Right, we're going to have to play with it so we can get that stuff right. I could also take, and they make different styles of um, equalizers. This piece here just basically makes sure that it's pulling on both cables equally and one's not getting a little more than the other. But they do make different styles. Like this guy here. So with this one you'd take and put a cable into each one. And then I'd have one cable going up to there. And doing it this way, that would split it in half, so I'd only have a two inch, two inches of pull. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out, try to figure out what's going to work best for me here. Um, I don't think it's really going to be an issue, but the passenger side brake cable, since it has to go a little bit further, it's uh, it's not super tight right there, but the way I had it before out here, it's kind of kind of iffy, but I think it'll be all right. So got a little bit of figuring left to do, but we're getting closer than we were. So you can see the uh, the uh, brake canister bracket a little better there. I still have to cut down my rod here. I'll probably make it just about as short as I can get it, and then it's got a, a clevis that goes on top of there. 
and uh, that'll hook to my doohickey so yes. that'll go to the thingamabob so um and it turns out i'm still having uh, air and fuel issues um i put that check valve in there i actually ran it out of fuel um i had like 10 gallons in there but i think the way that it's on the hill it can't get to it all so i ran it out of fuel right after i put that in there put some more fuel in it and the next time i tried it it started right up i was like well i guess the check valve's working and then i just went to fire it up the other day and i don't know if the check valve was stuck open or what the deal was but it had drained all the way back to the tank and when you pumped on this it wasn't even i mean it was just air it wasn't even fuel so i'm still having an issue somewhere on the suction side of this has an air leak so i'm thinking of getting rid of this filter housing with the hand pump because i have noticed too when you pump on this fuel will start to seep out around the pump itself which means that it's leaking somehow inside the pump which could be our source of air or it could be these goofy fittings that you know oh at 387 pt no it's some goofy straight cut metric that you'll never be able to find anywhere so anyways somewhere in there it's leaking so i have another filter head that's the same size threads well the same size filter threads it's got th it actually has 387 pt ports but it's like identical to this just without the pump and not the goofy threads so i think i'm gonna swap that into here and then i have the old electric lift pump that came with the truck which is just like a a little i'll just show you so i got this here i don't even know what the ratings are for it but usually these are like a couple of pounds compatible with gasoline diesel biodiesel blended alcohol and fuel additives that's about all they give you but uh, it pumps fuel so it goes click 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 you know when you hook it up so i need some way to prime the system you know to get the air out and without a hand pump and the only ones you can find on ebay are those cheap garbage ones that i already got so i figure i'll use this and put it on a switch as long as well as along with putting it on the ignition so when you change the filters out you can open up the bleed screw flip a switch this will run pump fuel until it comes out of the filter housing and then shut it off kind of deal so uh, 